Welcome to Guns, Optics, and Reality. My name's Brian. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, today we're going to wrap up our series on uh, the 260 Remington Reloading. Sorry it took so long to get this out to you. I've uh, been really busy. Um, so I got it done finally. A couple of little changes to it. Uh, in the video, I'm using some Redding uh, Master Competition dies. I believe that's what they are. Uh, and I've since switched. Uh, I've switched over to some of the Widden, uh, some of the Widden Gunworks dies. It's kind of the same thing, only different. So I'll be doing a uh, a new video on that here shortly, showing you how I set those dies up. It's pretty much going to be the same thing, just a different die set. Uh, but anyways, just so when you see that and you're wondering, hey, why are these different? That's why. But anyways, so this is the this is the final. Uh, stages of what I do for reloading for this 260 Remington so enjoy the video okay so after we neck size check our neck wall thickness trim our necks down if you've never done it before they only do it once uh, the next thing I do is I like to trim chamfer and deburr my brass now I do this all at once I have the Lee uh, quick trim die which chamfers deburrs all that with this cool little cutter head. Um, if I could afford a Gerard, Gerard, if you're listening, or somebody out there and you want to send me a Gerard, boom, do it. I would love to try one. But this is what I have, this is what I use, and it works well for me. So basically, you just take your brass, take it in there, raise it up, push down a little bit. Just do it for a second. Come down. Knock it out, and let's see how that looks. I don't know if it's focusing on there or not, but yeah, see? Trim, trim, chamfers, deburrs, all at once. So, it's a pretty easy process. Doesn't take real long. And uh, if sometimes if I get a little stuff in there, I'll just take a Q-tip. Make sure I get everything out. And that's pretty much how I trim everything. So after this, we'll go into primers. One little thing I want to add about this uh, quick trim die, I just thought about that. Uh, you might say, well, how do you set it up? Um, pretty much all I do is I raise the ram, and then I just drop this die down until it touches the bottom. That way I know that every time I raise this piece of brass up, it's always going to be the same size. I don't like over cam it or anything like that. I just bring it up so that it's always the same size. So when I bring this down on top of that piece of brass, it's going to cut, it's going to chamfer, and it's going to deburr. And I, make, I always put a little tray right here just to kind of catch everything. And then I'll just double check it, make sure there's nothing on the inside. If there is, I'll just kind of Q-tip it out. And it's real easy to set up. It's almost like a... I mean, pretty much you set up almost like a sizing die. So the next step after we've got our next trim turned, everything's all beautiful. Look at that. Oh, consistent. Our brass is clean and kneeled. Necks are turned. Chamfer, deburred. And remember, the, uh, the whole key to this is consistency. Is we want everything as consistent as possible. So our next step is priming. Uh, this is the new Lee... Uh, bench primer. Um, let me get some this stuff out of the way. Uh, and it's really nice. I like it. It's very easy to use. Um, you know, you get a nice, consistent seated primer. It's not a lot of work. Of course, it is when you're using one hand with a camera and one hand with the primer station. Uh, so. It works really good. Uh, I did have one little issue with this. I will tell you, uh, there was a little rubber thing right here. Uh, and if you look it up on the internet, some people say they over manufactured it. Uh, so if you take this off, it helps. Um, and, but what I experienced was this piece here as it was going up and down, um, it would lock, it would get stuck up in here. Um, and I found, I just loosened this screw right here as well as taking this little band off, but I loosened the screw and that kept this from sticking. So I don't know if maybe I just had one that might've been a little too tight from the manufacturer or whatever, but 
uh, as soon as I did those two little things, um, I haven't had any issues with it ever since. And um, like I said, it's a nice little piece. So I'm going to go through and finish priming all this stuff. I'm going to put my camera down so I can actually use two hands. And then we're going to get into charging the cases and uh, seating and all that cool stuff. And then we'll get into concentricity and the whole nine yards. So the next part is we are going to set up a, uh, a charge. Um, I'm going to be trying a new one. Actually, I'm going to be trying a couple different charges. Normally, when you're doing your load development, you're going to find a charge you like and you're going to stick with that charge. Well, I have been experimenting with Varget. Uh, with my 260 Remington and I found I need to get my velocities just a little bit higher so I'm going to be doing a couple of different ones but uh, essentially I'm just going to show you how I start charging as you can see I've got a, a Hornady powder throw here with the micrometer um, I've got an electronic scale and I've got my beam scale and I've got a trickler as well uh, so what I do is I'm going to use my powder throw to throw a basic charge and uh, I'm gonna check it with the weight so that I'm throwing under by about, I don't know, uh, let's just say I'm gonna throw a charge of 38 grains. So I'm gonna set this to probably be like 37.8. And according to this scale, I'm gonna set this one to 38 grains and then I will trickle it up to the 38 grains. So I'm going, that's how I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my basic stuff and then I'll get the camera back on once I got it going and we'll go through a little bit of flow of that. All right, so here we go. We've thrown a powder charge now. We've checked our weight over here, and now, as you can see, we've got it in the trickler. So now we're just gonna sit here and trickle this grain by grain until that beam levels out. Now this is where it gets a little meticulous but when you want to be precise you want to be precise and see that right there is precise. So there we go. Got our powder in there. The exact charge I want. And this thing measures this little RCBS scale. It's a 502. Picked it up at Midway USA. It literally if I go a grain or you know one of those over you'll see it so it's a really good scale I'm really impressed all right so next we're going to put that powder into the case so now I've got all of my cases set up in my loading block and basically this is how I do it I just take this and jump in here Normally I'm using two hands, not one, so. And then start the process all over again. So I'm going to take that pan off, throw my charge, come back over here, trickle it back up, do the next case. So yes, it does take a while to do this, but consistency, consistency, consistency. And you know, what's nice about having a light over your bench too is you can take your look over your cases and you can see okay I've got powder in that one so if you ever forget where you are you'll you won't be double charging your cases so it's a good thing to get in the habit of doing all right so I'm gonna sit here and charge the rest of these cases up all right so here we are at our bullet seating finally all right we've got our cases charged we've got everything done uh, now we are ready to seat the bullets and check the depth. Now, uh, again, I'm using uh, Redding Competition. This is a micrometer, uh, micrometer seating die. Uh, I've already got this set up. So I'm going to do a, because uh, I've had some questions, I guess I'm going to do another little video here next on how do I set my dies up. This one's pretty simple. I mean, it's a seating die. You basically set it up and then you check your depth. Um, you know, for those of you who have never done that, I really recommend, you know, picking up one of these uh, Hornady gauges. And of course you have to find the right case for your rifle, but you can go in there and you can measure your rifle and you can know exactly 
uh, what your rifle likes. I know my 260. Um, my 260 likes its OAL at 2.345. So that's what I've got this pretty much set up to. So when you have the seat in your bullets, it's pretty simple. You're just going to take that. And what I really like about these dice is that they have a seating sleeve so they keep everything really nice and straight and uh, concentric so that while you're doing that and then uh, we can check it here real quick see how it's doing using our gauge I don't know if you can see that or not 2.345 so that's a good one we'll save it so pretty much seating, seating the bullets is you know fairly simple there's not really a lot of um, you know it's not real hard you just hold the bullet seats it <laughs> and then you can sit here and you can check every single one if you want to but the nice thing about this uh, is pretty much once you get it set Once you get it set, it's set. So, oops. Let's see. Yep. So, 2.345. So, yep. Anyway, so that's bullet seating. Uh, and uh, I don't do a crimp on these. I don't. I don't need to do a, a little light crimp or anything because. Uh, when you use the neck sizing die, I know the tension on my bullet is good. They're not going to move around. So uh, that is how you seat them. So next thing we're going to go into is checking the concentricity. So here we are in pretty much the final step of um, what I like to do before we go shoot. Okay, we've cleaned our cases. We've trimmed them. We've chamfered we've deburred we've checked the neck wall thickness we've trimmed the necks down if they've never been trimmed before because you only want to do that once we've charged all our cases we've checked everything twice we've checked the seating depth so pretty much we're on the final product so now what this is this is a hornady concentricity gauge and basically this will you can use this to check the run out um, of your round so Get that fluorescent light out of there. So, okay, so basically you put your bullet in and you set it up, and this will measure how many thousandths of runout we have. So, as I rotate this case, this case has about two thousandths, which isn't bad. But you can just take this little screw right here, give it a little tweak. I like to have mine right around a thousandth or less. So now as I rotate that around, look at that, bam. We are down to less than a thousandth in run out. So do you have to go through and do all your bullets like this? The answer is no, but I do. If this is gonna be a competition round for a competition rifle, again, the whole name of this, the name of the game for this whole thing is consistency 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 so i want all my rounds to be as identical as i can get them so if i can get every single round to have less than a thousandth of run out so that they're straight you basically want a circle within a circle within a circle that bullet that case you want everything lined up perfectly straight uh, so that when you fire that uh, projectile out of that barrel it is going as straight as possible um, so that's the last step and then uh, pretty much you go out to the range and you shoot these things and you have a good time. Uh, um, I'm actually doing some load development with this one, so this is going to be fun. So anyways, that is how I reload for 260 Remington. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do another video here pretty soon showing how I set up the dies. Um, I've had a lot of questions on how do I set up my bushing dies and my competition seating dies and all that stuff. So I'll do a little bit more comprehensive video on that later. 
Uh, so for all of you who are wondering, uh, that'll come out next. All right, so that's it for this video series of reloading for the 260 Remington. I really just kind of wanted to show you the process I go through trying to get the most accurate ammo for my rifle, and this is pretty much how I do it. Uh, like I said, uh, I've uh, the only thing I've kind of changed since the last video is I have switched over to uh, some wind gun works dies, and I'll be doing a video on that here real soon. Hey, if you haven't told anybody about the channel yet, go ahead and tell some buddies, like it, click subscribe, and uh, get the word out. Uh, I got some more videos coming up for you here real soon. Got some other cool little new gadgets and stuff coming out, and uh, also some new reloading stuff, so uh, thanks for watching.